In this clip, we are looking at the effect of light on plant development. Plant development is fundamentally affected by not only the quantity of light, its brightness, but also by its quality. And this leads to photomorphogenesis, the development of a pattern based on the control by light. Here we see seedlings of mustard, which have been treated in white light or given a five minute treatment in red light. And then we have others that have had treatment with far red light, just in dark or with red followed by far red, different light treatments with different qualities or colors of light. To examine the anthocyanin production, we first count out 20 seedlings of each of the different treatments and put them into a test tube and then add isopropanol water mixture, which is going to extract the soluble anthocyanin pigments. These test tubes are then put into a boiling water bath for two minutes to extract the pigment. After extraction, the tubes look like this, with different amounts of the red anthocyanin pigment extracted in the different treatments. These are then put into a spectrophotometer cuvette with a fixed path, line, path length, and the absorbance of the pigment is measured in the spectrophotometer at 535 nanometers, the maximum absorbance of the anthocyanin. see that the reading at this um, wavelength is 0.886 absorbance units. These experiments are repeated two times for each one of the treatments with different lights and you can see that the white light gives the brighter the darkest red pigment with the highest absorbance value whereas the red gives about half that and the dark and the red follow far-end treatments give very little production of the anthocyanin pigments. If we look at those, those results fit very well with what we see from the tubes themselves. Far-red, red, and dark are all very light, whereas red and white are showing considerable anthocyanin production. So what's going on here then? Well, the fact that red and far-red light have effects indicates that the important photoreceptor phytochrome is involved in this response. Under white light or red light treatment, the inactive phytochrome red form becomes the active phytochrome far red form, which leads to anthocyanin production when it's present after white or red light treatment. Without any light treatment or with far red light, the phytochrome form stays as red, PR, phytochrome red. But when far red light is shone onto the phytochrome far red, it reverses into the phytochrome red. This PR is inactive biologically, and we can see that if we look at the tubes here, where the red and the white have produced the anthocyanins, the far red hasn't, and the red followed by the far red has reversed the response, so that we have much less anthocyanin produced in that treatment. In the dark, we also have no production. We can see this as well if we go back and look at the original seedlings with the white and red treatments at the bottom left and right showing red color anthocyanins, whereas the other plants have only produced the very palest of colors. This is because they have the inactive form of the phytochrome red. The phytochrome far red reversed to the phytochrome red.